Media Professionals and Coffee will talk about online content, social marketing, branding communication and public relations with Ayan Bailey, Director of Communication at Waysmith Canada. Welcome to Professionals and Coffee, Ayan. Thank you so much. It's great to be here today. Okay, thank you. Well, and now uh, I'm going to, to, to start with my first question. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm curious about how you started your professional journey in the world of communications. Absolutely. Um, you know, I guess my journey into the world of communications didn't necessarily start out the traditional PR way. Um, I started my studies Uh, years ago uh, in Edmonton, I went to a post-secondary institution called Nate, so a college uh, in Edmonton, and I was in a um, business diploma. And it was sort of as I was in the program, realized I actually really do enjoy the communication side of things. So focused my um, efforts and my studies, because we there were four different tracks you could take in terms of your studies. And so I focused on marketing. Um, PR was a little bit of the marketing because it is part of, uh, you know, when you're talking about marketing. So I didn't do a lot of it in terms of studies with respect to PR. And I know, um, I suspect your uh, education probably was focused strictly on PR. Mine was not. Um, and so it basically, once I finished that two-year diploma, I started working and I started working for uh Uh, national business organization. So my work involved both PR and government relations, so public relations and government relations. From there, I, you know, I still really wanted to get in deeper into PR. So I decided to um, try to focus on that. And, and certainly in terms of my job, taking opportunities to um, do things that were related to PR. This is back when we used to send news releases via fax to journalists, which was a little while ago. Uh, we obviously don't do that kind of thing today. But it, it gave me that opportunity to sort of focus um, on the PR and then also to even developing things like I was programming websites, that sort of thing. So because um, I really wanted to hone my skill set in that area. So fast forward, I did that for a number of years. Then I joined the Chambers of Commerce and did a lot of the similar kind of work. And then uh, eventually at one point, the college that I went to, I joined their corporate communications team, which was really, really good because then I had a number of peers on a team to kind of work together, but also learn from one another. And I really, really enjoyed that. Um, which later led to, uh, you know, another position with um, like the CAA in Alberta. So the Canadian Automobile Association as a writer and editor. And then I, I, you know, I was continuing my sort of journey. I finished in that time, my university degree in a bachelor of management while I was working full time. And I decided I wanted to do a master's degree. So started that process of uh, looking at doing a Master of Arts in Communications and Technology. Um, so continued working, doing all of that. I got my accreditation in public relations in that time, as well as my master's degree. And then I decided, okay, well, now I, I want to work on national business. And at the time, I should have mentioned I was living in Alberta, in Edmonton. And so that's when I decided to make the move to Toronto. Um, certainly a big theme throughout my career has been... Um, the Canadian Public Relations Society. So as I was building sort of my experience, I had a lot of really great mentors and colleagues within the Canadian Public Relations Society. So when I moved to Toronto, it was a little bit easier because I had people that I knew here in Toronto and was able to reach out to them. So I secured my first job with an agency in Toronto and worked there for two and a half years. And then went to another agency after that for about six years as well. And I think um, working for an agency is sort of fast forward on your career. You get to meet so many people and work on so many things. Um, so it was fascinating in that respect. Then, I, you know, at the same time, I was continuing to volunteer with the Canadian Public Relations Society and join the board, eventually becoming president of the Canadian Public Relations Society here in Toronto. And, you know, that... That continued to be a really great way to just build relationships. Um, so 
I worked at that agency job and in the meantime was also uh, an instructor at the University of Toronto for about five years. Um, something that I thought I had actually left behind because it was it was a lot of work doing sort of the full-time job during the day and then also teaching in the evenings. Uh, but it is actually something I'm taking on again this semester. Uh, I will be teaching again at the University of Toronto. But anyways, it's, it's a long journey and it's sort of one of those journeys where you meet people and it uncovers something and then you move on to a new direction. So when I was working agency and actually one of your former guests, Linda Andros, um, so her agency, Apex and Ruckus, um, who I adored working with, um, we got involved in a lot of like crisis communication stuff. And one of our clients actually was um, the regional municipality of Wood Buffalo, which is the city where Fort McMurray is at. They had a forest fire in 2016, which turned out to be um, the largest insured disaster in Canadi Canadian history. So a lot of our team was actually involved in that. And so because of that, it led to more opportunities in crisis communications. I, you know, I would say for myself, crisis communication sort of has a shelf life and uh, it becomes very difficult to continue to, at that pace. Um, and so in the time that I was at Apex, I was working on some clients that focused on science and I thought, OK, I have a real interest in that. So that's where I decided to take this opportunity where I am at today at Weizmann. I did not know Weizmann when I applied for the job, but it is a world class research institute. In fact, the founder was friends with Albert Einstein. So it's deeply rooted in science. Um, and so for me, it made sense. And I thought, you know, it'll be great to focus on something a little different now. But um, that was November 2019. And I was kind of hoping to get away from crisis. But of course, the pandemic hit uh, and working for a scientific organization. We went from having one lab working on coronaviruses to 60 labs, which also meant crisis for us as well and ramping up. Anyways, so that is, in a nutshell, my history to date. Um, I love working in science communications. I think I think everybody should care about science because it impacts us so much. Right now, climate change is such a big issue. And so that sort of has been my passion and sort of that narrowing focus, I would say, to where I am today. Wow, your, your professional journey sounds amazing. And I think you made a good point about um, a building relationship throughout all this journey is really important and not only focus on work but also uh, developing uh, your own networking it helped you uh, to make easier uh, the transition when you were at Edmonton or and then in Toronto that, that's really important yeah, and I would say like a, a podcast like this, because you get that opportunity to meet people and to talk to people, that is always going to be number one in our profession. That's what we want to do is connect with people. And so whenever you do that, you don't realize what other opportunity might present itself. And that's the part that I've always found really exciting. And yeah, invest in those relationships, continue putting the time to invest in those relationships, and you never know where it'll take you. I totally agree with you. Um, my next my next question is, um, a, well, we understand that you are the Director of Communication and Waste Management. What are some of your duties as Director of Communications? Uh, I mean, we, I, they expand and contract, I guess, all the time, but essentially representing a national organization. Um, so our campus is in Israel. Um, but we have committees around the world, uh, Weizmann Canada being one of them, and we act as the fundraising arm for, for the campus in Israel. So our activities essentially include everything you could imagine with respect to any way you could communicate with donors and with volunteers and fundraising and, um, you know, really making sure that our educational programs are out there as well. So we even do some high school first year university programs. So making sure that all of those audiences get the information about the science. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think definitely working in this kind of environment, you're exposed to so many things because we are a national business organization, but we're also very 
small and agile. And so it means we're doing a lot more. I kind of like that approach to things. I find sometimes when you work in a larger organization, you're not doing some of the things perhaps that maybe writing or whatever that you are passionate about, but working in a smaller organization, you always have that ability. Um, Yeah. So it's everything paid, earned, owned, media relations, website, digital, writing, speaking notes, video production, all of it. What are some of the latest digital tools or emerging trends in social media and online content that you have encountered most recently? I mean, I I think certainly the trend about people turning it off more now and, you know, even getting rid of accounts. And we started seeing that a while ago, definitely. Um, I think that is definitely a trend, you know, in terms of like the tools themselves. I think it's really interesting, you know, with tools like TikTok and just the most recent developments with the Canadian government and how the scrutiny that is happening there because of the data harvesting, potential data harvesting, that sort of thing. So it's always interesting to to watch in that realm. Um just because it does exist doesn't necessarily mean as an individual, as an organization, you should be there. And so for me, that part is really interesting and in seeing, you know, is it something that we should be on? Is it something that we should be looking at? PR, you know, in a nutshell, it was know your audience and is your audience actually there? And um, I think certainly in early days of social media, it was sort of the shiny tool and let's do that. And there's Definitely still a lot of that, but I think that organizations, individuals are probably a little bit more discerning in determining we can't be everywhere and be everything to everybody, which are the tools that we really need to focus on. So I think we're going to kind of see more of that. Um, And then also some social media platforms come and go in terms of their popularity, right? Who knows what's going to happen with Twitter, for example? Um, You know, we've seen it in the past with you know, spaces like MySpace and I mean, which kind of exist still, but not at all to the extent that they were popular way back in the day. So to me, sort of that ebb and flow and nothing is constant. It's always changing. And, um, and, you know, even how tools are trying to mimic one another. I was actually having a conversation with my husband today about their podcast. And um, he was speaking, my husband is a comedian, and he was speaking to another comedian about his podcast. And they were saying they're trying to do a lot more short videos on YouTube, because YouTube is trying to compete with TikTok and the short videos on TikTok. And so it's constantly this game of cat and mouse of trying to keep up with it. And and like I said, as communicators in the, the field, it, we can't keep up either, but it's also having those conversations and seeing what others are doing and what they're experiencing, I think is going to be a constant and just trying to figure it out. Like I said, you can't do it all. So figure out the best places to be and do that really well. Um, and so I think we're going to kind of see a little bit more of that now, both on an individual level, but also on a brand level. Do you believe, well, and it's a little bit related with this. Do you believe the role of the influencer will continue to be relevant in the world of online content or branding? If the role of the influencer will continue? Uh Yeah, I mean, I think I was actually in a webinar today about they were talking about influencers and not so much the celebrity influencer, but more kind of micro influencers and the impact of micro influencers. I I think there's always going to be there's always going to be a a role for them to play for sure. I think it's sort of going to be like other platforms. And when I say platforms, I mean, historically, again, if you look at PR over time and all of the tools like television and radio and newspapers, they all still exist today. The only platform that doesn't exist today is when we had the telegraph, which it, it never evolved into something better. Um, it just kind of went away. But, you know, even like say television and and in, in my lifetime, you know, we used to have the six o'clock news and that's when you would get your news. And then in the eighties and nineties, that's when they had 24 hour news networks, which changed how we got news because then we were getting news all the time. There wasn't a time of day where we were getting the news. And so I think we're definitely going to 
see that with influencers as well. Certainly early on on the web, influencers really kind of took off and they became, you know, something big. And I mean, there's always going to be the viral influencers that the unexpected or like, I don't know, the Justin Bieber's of the world who are going to take off because they perform on a YouTube and, you know, it just takes off. But I think for the most part, we're still going to see those influencers. I actually do really value it, it's funny. I didn't think I would ever say that there, there are some influencers that I do follow, but there are, there's, you know, there's a, a particular designer out of Vancouver that I really enjoy. And I, I just think he does it really well. Like he, you know, he might not necessarily call himself an influencer he is, but he really is an expert in the interior design space or there's some financial um, influencers that I follow and they just know their stuff. Like you, you know, that's, they're in financial planning professionally and they do it really, really well on social media. So I do think when there is that sort of deep expertise that those influencers definitely will be around. I do get kind of exhausted by the influencers who are doing, I don't know, for shock value or or whatever. Um, I I still think that those are going to, to be there, whether we like it or not. It's sort of like the reality TV um personalities that we see that wasn't a thing there was a time when we didn't have reality tv and people weren't famous just for being on a reality tv show but that is the reality now and that continues but say like a show like survivor for example when it first came out oh my goodness everybody was watching it but now it's what 20 some years later and is it 20 some around? I mean, at least seasons. And, you know, it's, I don't know anybody who watches it now, but it's still popular. So it's sort of like that long tail where, yes, I think they'll definitely continue to have a following, but it's more niche. And there is certainly that, um, that very focused kind of follower because they get something out of that. So for sure. How do you manage the organization's budget for social media campaigns and initiatives? So how do we manage anything related to social media and the campaigns? In terms of budget. Oh, in terms of budgets too. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, it's all documentation, you know, Excel spreadsheets, making sure we keep track of things, making sure we're very well organized, say on our business manager with campaigns. So we sort of allocate for the year. Uh, Sorry. Have you ever had experience about that? So, for instance, when you have to develop a uh, a campaign uh, with paid advertisements or with paid posts? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're doing that all the time. Um, so, I, currently in my current position, absolutely. I mean, the reality is to be on social media, you can't just have organic content and paid content. The algorithms don't work for you. You need to have paid budget. So, absolutely. I, and it's really a matter of always making sure we know where we're at in terms of the budget. Um, I think, especially coming from an agency, and having multiple clients, like th that is critically important. Like you really need to know on a day-to-day -day basis how much you're spending. And it's really a matter of being diligent in all of your budgeting documents, making sure you're very well organized on the back end for all of your social media platforms, really paying attention to it's not You can't just set it and let it run until the end of the month or whatever. Like you really have to be in there and watching how things are performing and sort of making sure that the content that is performing well, maybe then we need to reallocate some of our budget there. So it is, I mean, I would say it's even like your own personal finances um, and your own budgeting as an individual. The, the more closely you pay attention to it, the better you're actually going to do. I mean, I do know people who I'm just going to put on my credit card and, you know, I'm going to deal with it at some point later. And I mean, that's when things get out of control. And so it's the same thing with anything related to budgets inside of an organization. You really should be looking at that daily and making sure, you know, you know how, and I mean, you have to anyways, if you have comments turned on or whatever, making sure that um, you're interacting properly with those individuals who are commenting on your content. But yeah, it's, uh, you can't, pay enough attention to those kinds of things. Like you really need to make sure that you know at any given point in time where you're spending. And especially in an agency environment, because you can very easily overspend. Um, and budgets, 
are very important on a month to month basis. And you need to know how much you're going to be invoicing a particular client. So you have to make sure that you're always on top of that. But yeah, just clear documentation and making sure that whoever is involved in that is keeping that up to date is incredibly important. If you could tell us your process for formulating a social media marketing strategy, or maybe when, when you were an instructor for the UMP. You're constantly, every single day, doing your research and analyzing and tweaking and changing and communicating again and then evaluating. Okay, well, you know, we're looking at our budgets and this is not spending, so we need to shift it. And so that to me is sort of the key for, sorry, my lights are on smart timers and it just turned off there, but um, that is the key is that you always have to be agile and you always have to be checking in and seeing how things are performing. Um, and so any communicate or any not just social media strategy, but any strategy is always this very agile approach where we're constantly looking at things and we're adjusting and we're having conversations and trying to analyze things. Um, it's not, you create a strategy, let's go execute it, then we'll evaluate it. We're constantly tweaking and making sure that we're achieving our goals. And the, the reality is, You know, the, when that formula was created, it comes back to that model that I was talking about. PR back then was very one way. We would put out a message as an organization. Okay, now let's evaluate it. But we kind of, we do the same thing now, except we're getting the feedback and we're having to adjust what we were planning as our strategy, maybe, because I don't know, Uh Something happens in the news and it's actually not appropriate to go out with this particular strategy right now or whatever it is. Like things happen so quickly. What would be your, um, my last question is, what would be your best advice to someone interested in entering the world of online content, branding and social media? <laughs> I would say make it your own. Um, I know that... I don't know, especially in a world that there's influencers and people want to be like a certain person, be you. <laughs> That's the whole reason why social and digital works well is that people can show their diversity. And, you know, and, and I mean, we didn't even touch on this, and but good communications really involves diversity in what um, people are doing. Um, in terms of projects, in if you're going to launch a social media campaign or a digital campaign, I want to see that diversity in that campaign. I don't want to see the same thing I've always seen, right? Um, that might be, they kind of copied that campaign on that other organization out there. Like that to me would be my piece of advice to anybody starting out. Thank you. Uh, anything else that you would like to add to this interview, Diane? Oh, uh, no, I mean, I, you know, I just keep an open mind is what I would say to anybody out there. And I, I do thank you so much, Carolina, for this opportunity. I think what you're doing is actually a really great thing for, it's actually quite brave to do this and like put it out there. And so I commend you for doing that, because I think you're not only opening doors for yourself, but you're also opening doors for other people. So Um, that's the whole point of working in communications is connecting with people. And so keep doing what you're doing. I think it's really, really, really good. Okay. Well, thank you so much, uh, Diane, um, for your words, for your time, um, for lending us a little bit of your time and for teaching us more about online content, social marketing, branding, and public relations. And uh, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carolina. I appreciate it. Everything we do here works because of you guys. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and join our social media networks. Click the link in the description below this video and please join us to do your own virtual coffee chat as I did today. I hope you enjoyed our discussion and learned a lot about online content, social marketing, brand and public relations. Mm -hmm.